Oh, this is going to be fun. In this video, I'm going to refute a reasonably famous PragerU video in which a woman tells women to not date, just get married. Prepare for hilarity. Alpha Male, Alpha male 2.0 Freedom Focused Lifestyle Design for Men We do five videos a week here on how to make both your business life and woman life more free because you need both. If you subscribe to this channel, leave a like on this video and leave a comment on this video, you will automatically be entered into the regular drawing for my online video course on how to create location independent income, normally $1,400. We regularly announce the winners at the community feed at this channel. All right, so this PragerU video is about a year old. It's got about 2 million views, and I stumbled across this a while ago. One or two of you actually sent me the video at the time, and I just uh, didn't have the time to respond to it. But today is the day I'm going to respond to this thing. Uh, it pretty much speaks for itself, but let's have some fun. Let's have some fun with facts and logic and rationality, which... Unfortunately, a lot of traditional right-wingers don't have when it comes to the topic of dating, sex, and marriage. Women, here's a revolutionary idea. Date with a purpose. What purpose? Getting married. Whoa, am I moving too fast for you? Making you uncomfortable? Dating, you say, is just, well, dating. You know, hookups, casual flings, having fun, yeah? Who said so? Well, it depends. <laughs> so if you said, look, if you are a certain age and you want these certain things, then you and you want to get married, then yes, you should date with the purpose of getting married. Here's the problem. A lot of women don't want to get married. A lot of women are, and, I, and conservatives hate it when I say this, a lot of women are too young to get married. The divorce rate among women who get married who are under the age of, I believe, 25 is something like 92, 93%. So is this woman telling all women of all ages, hey, just get married, date to get married. If you're 18, if you're 20, if you're 27, just date to get married. That's the first thing. Second thing is, most women over the age of 33, as I've observed many times, are already doing this. The only reason the vast majority of these women are going on dates is because they want to settle down with a dude somewhere. So this woman is kind of pissing into the wind. Women over 33 are already doing this, and a lot of women under 33 shouldn't do this. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for fun, but I'm interested in something deeper here, like happiness. All right, I've done studies on this, or at least I've shown the studies on my blogs, that a lot of people become less happy when they get married, and they certainly become less happy when they have children in a marriage. Uh, I've, I've shown you the studies on my blog. You can go to calebjones.com to look at that. But numerous studies show that when you have kids, your average typical daily or weekly happiness drops for about 20 years until the kids move out, and then you get happy again. I'm certainly not saying that marriage should be the first topic of conversation. At least wait until the pizza is served. Just kidding. But I am saying that you need to ask yourself this question. Why do you want to go on a date with someone? Physical attraction? That's important. Common interest in something? Also important. But what else? Let's face it, most of the time we, and by we here I'm referring to women, have no idea. That's not true. I'm sorry, that's not true. What she's referring to, I believe, is very young women. So yes, very young women, 18-year-olds, 23-year-olds, 24-year-olds, are just going to go on a date without a specific plan. That's true, that happens. But as soon as you cross 33, and I would submit it's an even earlier age, really around 27, 28, 29, are you fucking kidding? Women know exactly why they're there. They know precisely why they're on a date. They're looking for their next beta male husband <laughs> or their first beta male husband or to settle down with a beta male boyfriend because they become provider hunters. What she is saying is absolutely false and makes absolutely no sense unless she qualifies it with an age parameter, which you notice she is not doing. She's just saying all women or women in general. We have no plan. That's okay as far as it goes, but as far as it goes, is not very far and frankly, not very smart. But let's play out the scenario. We too often assume that relationships have levels of commitment, progressing, if they progress at all, like video games. That is correct. That is exactly right. 
Do you have a deep level of monogamous romantic commitment on the second date? Of course you fucking don't. And if you did that, you would be insane regardless if, if you're a man or a woman. Yes, it is indeed a progression. You have to make sure before you make a commitment to someone that this person is A, compatible with you long-term and B, the real person you're dealing with. As I've talked about numerous times, people and women in particular are on their best behaviors within the first one to three months in a new relationship. You've got to wait several months to know the real person that you're dealing with. So yes, commitment is not something you just reward. It is indeed a progression. A hookup is level one, dating is level two, level three, living together. And then after we've had those, maybe we're ready for marriage. But in fact, relationships usually don't progress that way. Uh, yes, they do, sweetheart. That is exactly how they progress. Hookups arise out of whim, impulse, or simple attraction. Dating is often based on compatibility or convenience, and sometimes on the hope that something serious might develop. Living together may be based on real love and a tryout for marriage, but it can also be based on less serious considerations like lack of other opportunities, desire for a roommate, or the inability to afford a single apartment. Yes, that's all, that's all accurate, but how does that conflict with what you just said about commitment being a progression? None of that conflicts with the reality that in all normal relationships, dating is indeed a progression. Does that mean that you never have people who just hook up? Of course not. But the vast majority of people, including women who just hook up, are doing it because that's all they want. They just want to have fun. They're 21 years old. They know they don't want to get married or they don't want a serious boyfriend yet because they're not emotionally ready for such a thing based on their lack of maturity. So, of course. So what you're saying again doesn't make any sense. But marriage is a different enterprise entirely. Those looking for a good marriage are looking for someone who wants to build a shared life. They're looking for someone who shares their values and beliefs, moral, political, and where applicable, religious. Um, partially correct. Yes, if you want to get married, and I am married, so I'm speaking as a married man, of course I'm OLTR married, not traditional marriage. Traditional marriage doesn't work anymore. It hasn't worked for a long time. But yes, morally and, and in terms of your life plans, obviously you would settle down with a woman who is compatible with those things. Political and religious, no. No. I personally know many people who have been together long term in a living relationship or married who have completely different political views and or completely different religious views. Uh, I am a hardcore minarchist libertarian. My wife, Pink Firefly, is very apolitical. She's basically a centrist. Um, when I start talking about libertarian stuff, it just... She just kind of like rolls her eyes and religious. Um, I am not an atheist, but I am a hardcore agnostic. I am anti-religion because religion is just another form of false societal programming. My wife is a Christian and not only a Christian, she is a practicing Christian. And we've been married now. We're going into our fourth year of marriage and we're doing fucking fantastic, better than I ever expected. And that is not a unique, rare exception to the rule. I've seen this happen many times. They view each other not only as a partner, but as something even more profound, husband and wife. The problem with so many dating relationships is that people enter them with completely different understandings of what the ideal outcome should be. That's correct. So that is true. And that is why you have to have these talks. I talk about having the talk after about five months of dating someone where you reveal to her, actually not reveal because she already knows, you verbalize to her that you're never going to be monogamous. Then if she's an OLTR and you want to settle down with this woman, I talk about having the OLTR talk. And that's a different talk where you actually list out all the negative things a woman will experience if she lives with you long term. So you're laying out all the possible problems and you're also laying out exactly what you want, what you don't want. Do you want kids? Do you not want kids? How many kids do you want? Where are you going to live? What country are you going to live? So yes, that is true. That's why you have to lay all this stuff out because certainly the other person isn't going to do this. He wants X and she wants Y. And it's easy to get distracted and fooled by superficial compatibility. They're thrilled they both like kombucha, kayaking, and karaoke on the weekends. That's all great, but when do you get down to the stuff that really matters over the long run? Stuff like marriage, family, faith, and values. Not everyone wants marriage. Not everyone is emotionally ready for marriage. Not everyone has the maturity for marriage. Marriage, particularly today in the modern era, is ridiculously difficult. 
You have to be completely on your game to maintain a marriage, not to get married, to maintain a marriage. And the vast majority of modern day human beings aren't capable of this. And as I've shown many times at my blogs, when I'm showing these divorce statistics, the real divorce statistic in terms of the odds of you getting divorced today in the 2020s in the Western world is somewhere north of 76%. So clearly people aren't capable of this. Maybe at one point they were. And actually we could have a discussion about that where it's not that they were capable of it, it's just that it wasn't a social option to get divorced. But many people don't want this and are not capable of this, including many, if not most, women. Many people don't want kids. Many women don't want kids yet. They're too young for kids. And again, this woman is not making any distinctions whatsoever regarding the age of this person. Are you saying, sweetheart, that a 19-year-old girl should get out there and find a husband immediately and immediately crank out some babies? That would destroy her life. The odds are north of 70, actually north of 90% in her case, that she would become divorced and live the rest of her life as a single mom. Terrible, terrible idea. And in terms of faith, again, a lot of people are non-religious. A lot of people doesn't fucking matter. I don't care what religion my future wife had when I was looking to settle down. I didn't give a rat fuck about those things. Values, yes. As long as she shared my values, yes. But faith, religion, I just don't care. So again, not all people care, sweetie. You do, and that's great. But what you're doing is what most politically active people do, both on the left and the right, is you're taking your personal feelings and projecting them out on the world, even when they don't apply. And in this case, they don't apply to most people. I say the sooner the better. If a relationship looks like it has a future, talk about it early on. And if it doesn't look like it has a future, what are you doing in it? You're probably having fun. You're probably enjoying yourself. You're probably having lots of orgasms. You're probably having fun enjoying the things that you want to do because you're not ready for a committed, serious relationship yet based on your emotions, based on your age, based on your maturity, and based on where you are in life. Here's another example that has nothing to do with age. Maybe a woman just got out of a divorce. She just got out of a terrible divorce. Should she immediately go find another fucking husband? No, as I've told men many, many times. When you go through a divorce, you are completely off your game emotionally for at least a year, sometimes two years. And you shouldn't have any serious relationships of any kind during that time. But you still probably want to have sex because it's a biological need. You still probably want to enjoy yourself because you're a human being. So my goodness, again, you're just taking this giant blanket statement, hey, if it's not going anywhere toward marriage is what she's saying, then you should immediately break up with the person and find another person who could be your future husband or wife. Insane. I have no doubt the reason so many women get stuck in dead-end relationships is that it has become taboo, or to be precise, not politically correct, for a woman to articulate what she really wants, which takes me back to marriage and why women crave it. Women crave marriage because, it, as I've talked about many times, marriage is relationship insurance for the woman. In other words, it's an insurance policy she takes out on the relationship where if the relationship doesn't work, even if it's her fault it doesn't work, she gets a bunch of free money. That's why women like marriage. That's why they want it. It's not because they have these deep moral <laughs> or religious convictions. I mean, there's a small percentage that do, but in the modern era, that's not the case. That's why women want marriage. They want marriage because in the back of their minds, they know I can dump this guy whenever I want, and then I get alimony, child support, communal property, half, blah, 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 blue. And they also know, because they've observed this from other women who've gotten divorced, that every person in the woman's life will immediately come to her rescue and immediately take her side in the divorce, her friends, her family, her parents, even again if the divorce was obviously her fault. So yeah, marriage is a great deal for women. That's why they want it but they want it for logistical reasons, not because of these deep committed moral or religious reasons in the modern era. Here are three reasons. Protection. Protection you can get without getting legally married. You can be protected by a man in a serious boyfriend, girlfriend relationship. You can be protected by a man in a live-in relationship that is not legal. So incorrecto. Again, unless you're talking about, and I don't know if she's implying this, maybe she is, the relationship insurance. Hey, you get protection because if you get divorced, you get free money from the dumb guy. Well, sounds great. Commitment? Incorrect. I have discussed this many times. You do not have commitment in modern Western marriage. 
The divorce rate is north of 76% in the modern era, in the 2020s, in the 21st century, not in the 1950s. We don't live in the 1950s anymore, but in the modern era, any person, man or woman, can divorce the other person anytime they want for literally any reason they want. And when they do it, instead of getting ostracized by society, they will be celebrated and supported for that decision. Marriage is not a commitment and anyone who says or implies this is flat out fucking stupid this is not 1953 this is the statement i keep repeating to cultural conservatives this is not the fucking 1950s this is not the 1800s back in those days yes marriage was an absolute commitment very true very accurate today fuck no you are a moron if you think marriage is any sort of commitment today you are literally stupid love as if you can't have love without a legal contract dumbest thing in the world of course you could love someone and be loved by someone and experience love on a deep even spiritual level without a piece of paper from the goddamn government approving or denying your relationship ridiculous nothing wrong with wanting those things it is something women have wanted and great societies have valued for thousands of years yes that's fine but for thousands of years, we didn't have 76 plus percent divorce rates with concepts like alimony, child support, which I actually do support in most cases, getting half communal property and other anti-man laws. It is something men still want too. Unfortunately, yes, it is something men still want. The only difference is that they wait longer. So as I've talked about, there is a red pill narrative that says that men are running away from marriage. This is inaccurate. Men in their 20s have run away from marriage. Men in their 30s get married at the exact same numbers if you look at the census data. Little wonder, study after study shows that those in good marriages are happier, healthier, even wealthier than those who are not. Do you hear what she just said? Listen very carefully what she just said. People in good marriages are happier and healthier and wealthier. Yeah, of course, because they're in a good marriage. What percentage of marriages today are considered good? And marriage therapists, marriage counselors, marriage experts will tell you across the board, it is a very small, small category. I've quoted some of these studies and statistics on my blogs. The percentage of people who are married in a quote, good marriage, is somewhere around 15%, 10%, somewhere in that range. What a ridiculous and stupid statement. The issue is not what a good marriage will bring you, the issue is what a typical marriage will bring you. Because statistically you're going to experience a typical marriage. Unless of course you follow my advice, and if you settle down, which means you've waited past age 35, and you settle into an OLTR marriage, where there is a legally enforceable prenuptial paperwork where you don't lose any money if you get divorced, and you are allowed to fuck other women whenever you want, that's fine. But this is obviously not what this woman is recommending. Like anything you want, you have to work toward it. And anything that isn't moving you toward your goal is a waste of time. Correct. That's accurate. But that doesn't change what I said earlier about many women who don't want marriage, who are not emotionally ready for marriage, or don't have the current maturity to maintain a marriage. What's the difference between living with someone and marriage? It's the difference between referring to the man in your life as my boyfriend, significant other, or partner, and referring to him as my husband. A, that is incorrect. If you live with a man, you can refer to him as your husband. I know couples who have done this, including couples in my own family who are not legally married, but they refer to themselves as husband and wife, number one. Number two, what fucking difference does it make for that label? Is that label really worth bringing the state, the government into your relationship and causing all kinds of problems and chaos down the road just because of a word you want to use? And him referring to you as my wife as compared with my girlfriend. Again, incorrect. You can have a live-in girlfriend or whatever you want to call it without being legally married and refer to her as your wife. You can get her wedding rings. She can change her last name to your last name. You can do all of those things without being legally married. And I personally know people who have done this successfully. Ask anyone who has taken the plunge and they'll tell you. Living together and marriage have little in common. It's sort of like the difference between living in a country and being a citizen of that country. The only difference between living with someone and being legally married is that you have brought a third entity into your relationship called big government. 
And this third entity will tell you exactly what's going to happen financially and with your children when, not if, when you get divorced. That is the only goddamn difference. Literally, it is the only difference. Does that sound like a good difference or a bad difference? The latter, with its commitments, obligations, and expectations, means a lot more. Incorrect. <laughs> Incorrect, I'm sorry. Getting legally married is no form of commitment or obligation in any way whatsoever in the modern era in the Western world. Wrong. To someone who tells you that a marriage license is trivial, just a piece of paper, here's a good response. If it's just a piece of paper, why are you so reluctant to sign it? Because I don't want to lose half of the money I've earned over the course of my working lifetime because some woman I married wakes up one day and decides she's not in love with me anymore? Oh, that's probably why. The answer, of course, is that no one believes that it's trivial. Everyone knows it's the most important decision you'll ever make. Yes, it's not trivial at all. That's why you shouldn't do it. Yeah, it's not trivial. Correct. Oh, signing? Are you kidding? Signing a legal marriage contract is one of the most non-trivial things you'll ever do. So in this respect, she's right. She just doesn't know how she's right. <laughs> so treat it that way. Here's a good rule of thumb. Think about the kind of relationship you want as much as you think about the kind of career you want. I agree. That's good. I'm not anti-career. I'm just pro-relationship. No, you're not pro-relationship. You're pro-marriage. Specifically, pro-marriage. Yep. Because when you get it right, there we go. that's the best relationship there is. Uh, no. No, I'm sorry. That is not the best relationship there is. I have talked about this many times before, and these are using old statistics that have gotten worse since then. Traditional marriage in the Western world in the modern era has approximately an 87% failure rate. That means that the vast majority of people who get married get divorced, and the vast majority of people who never get divorced end up with a shitty marriage that they don't really like and or dealing with cheating and other problems in the marriage. So that is factually and objectively inaccurate. It is not the best relationship. Sorry. And it starts with the first date. I'm Lauren Chen, host of Pseudo Intellectual on Blaze TV for Prager University. I would like to see, Miss Chen, when you get married or if you are currently married, if you get divorced down the road. Matter of fact, I am very tempted to Google your name and bookmark that for future reference to see when, not if, but when you get divorced. And then when you get divorced, I'm going to be really curious about what you say about being married. I have a feeling you'll just say, well, it didn't work out. I'll just get married again. And then I'm going to be really curious to see what your future divorced ex-husband says about this as well. You've got to understand that when it comes to relationships and marriages, traditional conservatives are using emotional logic rather than actual objectivity and facts. And you would think that these people would learn by now and look at the world and say, geez, maybe what we're talking about isn't working anymore. Maybe we need some kind of alternative. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. And the reason the divorce rate remains so high is because human society, unlike myself, still has not sat down and said, okay, guys, this traditional marriage thing used to work great. It doesn't work anymore. We've got to come up with some adult alternatives to this. Until society does that, and you know, it may never do that, but until society does that, we are going to leave a swath of dead bodies of divorced people and screwed up children. If you want more information on how to structure a live-in relationship that actually does work, you can go to joinsmic.com. That is my coaching and audio training program. Or you can click this video here for why you should get married at all. Or you can click this video here on how to set up a prenuptial agreement or prenuptial paperwork. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.